Hello and welcome to a newly named Dave <laughs> Raffle Coaches preview show this week. Myself joined in person by Dave Harvey. We wait till the last one of the season um, and then we join up in person as we preview the Saturdays, I'm making sure not to say Friday, the Saturdays Raffle Coaches Scottish Open, uh, which also doubles up as a farewell to Armadale meeting Dave. It's an exciting lineup that's been put together. I ran out of fingers when I was trying to count how many potential <laughs> winners I thought there could be. Looking forward to at the minute, what will be a great night at Speedway, yep. and maybe tinge with a bit of sadness as well. Yeah, I mean, it's a big blue ribbon event. We've not had it for a couple of years for the COVID and various other reasons. It's not always been in the calendar list, but it's always always a meeting you look forward to. Some cracking riders, eh, lots. I think they've probably gone intentionally for guys with, with the Edinburgh eh, links. Yeah. Centra and a couple of exciting ones in there, you know, Dan Bewley coming back to Armadale is obviously the the, the main one that kept, gets your attention, even Chris Harris and Richie Warrell the other night yeah. was in fine form, the defending champion, if you want to call him that, from yeah. three years ago. So, yeah, fantastic night of speed we were going to have on Saturday. As you say, with, hopefully it's not the last Armadale, but uh, yeah, I know it uh, should be an interesting evening. Well, that's it. I mean, I, I look down the line up, and obviously, we've got six of this year's Monarchs. Paco, the only one that misses out. He's in Italy. I think it's the last two rounds of the Italian Championship this weekend. You know, you've got three former winners in the field. Of the ones that aren't, you've got multiple uh, British champions at senior level, and Chris Harris at junior level, and Leon Flynn. And then, pretty much, I think everyone else in the line up has either won this event or has won the league as a Monarch or been a Monarch <laughs> for multiple years. Um, and that's before we mention Dan Bewley, number six in the world, two Grand Prix, Czech gold helmet, you know, you name it. So uh, as exciting a lineup as I can remember for an Open in probably in 10, 15 years. Yeah, definitely. It's really, really looking forward to it this week. As you say, lots of, I think there's eight or nine genuine contenders yep. and, and as you say, a few dark horses in there, like say Kai Thompson, that maybe you wouldn't expect wouldn't be a favourite, yeah. but... But if he has a good night at the deal, he, he's, he has cable to win in four or five races and get yourself into that semi or the final and you've got a chance. That's it. And of course, we touched on, as we stand, farewell Armadale meeting. So a nice night of nostalgia as well. I've seen a few names banded about, I believe. Freddie Shaw has confirmed he is looking to be in attendance. Peter Carr the same. Um, I know from looking at social media that Mike Hunter's contacted and been scouring the country for yeah. everyone who's ever ridden for the Monarchs. If you're watching this in a family uh, yeah. monarch, you're more than welcome to come yeah. on Saturday. Certainly from the Armadale era as well. Uh, and yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Saturday, half six tapes up, so unusual uh, timing. 22 heats, so with the usual 20 heat qualifying. Top three go straight to the final, yeah. and then a sh- uh, third, sorry, fourth through seventh, winner take all semi in that final. And how many times have we seen it in the past that the winner of the semi takes on? I remember Peter Carr famously, yeah. number heat 20, yeah. 21, 22, one year. Well, we'll see a repeat of that, Dave. Well, you never, you never know. It's been said you won it a couple of years ago as well. It's, yeah, uh, it's, uh, yeah you, once, once you're in the final, you know, you got a good gate and a good run. You, you never know. It's, uh, hopefully, we get some really good conditions and get some cracking racing as well because we're well, certainly, we, we're not even talked about Sam Masters or yeah. Josh Pickering yet. <laughs> and, uh, and it's just a fantastic lineup. Yeah, and it's, it is one they want to win. I mean, you remember guys like Rory Schlein before he went back to history, I was. Badger in the promotion last year. We haven't opened one open because he, of course, ties the record just yes. now with Peter, doesn't he? And he wanted another one. Um, you know, we've seen how much the Monarchs mean to guys like Sam and Josh and in their interviews the last couple of weeks. They want to finish on a high. You know, Richie Warrell just broke the track record in Heat 15, heat 15 on Tuesday. Better, yeah. Yeah, but, you know, I'll suggest, I'm not suggesting in any way, shape, or form <laughs> the fact we're announcing them as a sign in had anything to do <laughs> with what happened with that stopwatch, but. You know, that shows the form he's in. Richard Lawson, of course, you know, one we've not touched on, probably the only one actually in the field who isn't a monarch, former monarch, yeah. or former winner. Well, um, his dad did win it back his in dad the day. Did it, so. And obviously we've seen him, yeah. probably some of his best ever Armadale form this year, guesting yeah. for and against the monarchs. Yeah, and a couple of vital guests for the monarchs yeah. this season as well that helped us, uh, especially that one through at Ashfield yeah. in the summer. Nice, <laughs> nice <laughs> that. So yeah, it's one I'm really looking forward to. You know, you been a couple of week gap now obviously because of that rain off um, for the devil so it'll be good to get back an unusual Saturday night but 
a bit earlier as well. I think there's time for a couple of jars. Anyone, you know, <laughs> I know the original plan they've looked at putting gazebos and barbecues and stuff on it. The logistics that didn't work, but I know everyone's welcome in the bar afterwards. And, and you know, if this is to be the, the monarch send off, there's still a devil's match, but if this is to be the monarch send off, then let's go out with a bang and we will because there's fireworks after the final as well, Dave. So I can't wait. I know the riders are looking forward to it. Um, and yeah, tickets available now, edinburghmonarchs.co.uk. Uh, and then you see your tickets link. Uh, myself and Mike will be in the box doing commentary on the stream. EMTV is your link on that Edinburgh Monarchs webpage. Dave, we've touched on it. We've named a good chunk of the riders. I'm putting you on the spot. I'm putting you on the spot, <laughs> Dave. One, two, three. Who's winning? Ooh, one, two, three. Not just number one. I number one. I mean, it's really difficult to see past Dan Julie, the form yeah. he's in. I mean, we saw what Robert Lambert's done in the, the final of the yeah. Premiership Challenge of... of if uh, uh, Dan's form's anything like that, then he'll be a very difficult to beat. But uh, so uh, I'm gonna go heart, heart as much as head. I'm gonna I'm gonna stick my block out and say Sam's gonna beat him in the final. Uh, uh, Dan second and Josh third. There you go. I think for me, I think this is Josh's night. Um, we know how much it means to him to be a monarch. He's never managed to get that team glory he always spoke yeah. about. So you know, if he is going to go out as a monarch, I think he goes out. I could be biased and say I think Aaron Summers will be there, but that's maybe just because I'm sponsoring him for the meeting, the way the draw came out. So that'd be nice to have a winner's race bid uh, come the end of the year. I think I can't probably see too far past your top three, but you know, beyond that, as you say, will anyone be surprised if Richard Warrell's in the top three, if Richard Lawson's in the top three, you know, if Kai Thompson makes a run, if you know any of the monarchs make a run, you know, so many names. Yeah, you might mention Chris Harris. Of like, course. He's so been never actually been the guest Sharon. for us this, this <laughs> season. Uh, so maybe this is his guest appearance for yeah. the Monarchs. He's done it for every other team. But, uh, yeah, no, it's great. And I, yeah, I mean, Josh, number one in the field as well. Which, yeah. um, don't know if that'll be a hindrance for him uh, coming after. Well, I don't know, they'll do track grades after the right. four races. But you never know, on two insides. Not always his best, but he's shown this season they can do inside as well as outside. Analysis for Dave Harwell yeah. there. Not just me picking names <laughs> out there. Are Dave's analysis and gates, uh, track trades there. That's a professional there. But, as I say, tickets are available. EdinburghMonarchs.co.uk If you can't make it on but still want to watch the stream, EMTV is your link on that same website. Dave, we never leave without going into Mike Hunter's archives here and he's lined up a few for us. This week, so I'm not going to run through all the runners and riders because we didn't want to be here all night. <laughs> but here's some great heats from Scottish Open's past. Four, which is quite surprising, and Carl Stronier, who had second choice, to gate two, which is even more surprising. And I think that's given James Greaves a good chance from the inside, although the inside gate may not be working as well as it normally does here at Armadale. And Kevin Little was fourth choice, and uh, that means he took what was left, which was gate three. But he already chose that in the semi final, so he must like it. So who's going to come out first, second and third in the 1998 Dorval Lighting Scottish Open Championship? We'll know in four laps time. It's been a night of problems for a lot of riders, but it's still been an enthralling contest. And now is the big moment. Who's going to win it? on the inside. Reeves leads the way. Freddie Shot goes tearing around the outside again. Here comes Carl Stonehure on the inside of James Greaves. Freddie Shot trying to go around the outside and he's almost there. Greaves help her leather into that turn. Shot chasing like fury. And Freddie's come from the back a couple of times in sensational style. He's got a chance here. He's swinging right to the outside and he's level with Greaves. Shot round the outside. Greaves not trying to leave him any room. It's absolutely tremendous. What a finish. Greaves has gone ahead again. Shot's gone back to the outside line again. He's so impressive out there. He's almost level as they go into the last lap. What a race. What a race. Shot's gone ahead. Stonewall's into second. That was incredible riding by Shot. And he's won it. What a fabulous ride by Freddie Shot. With Stone here getting second, and Freddie is the most deserving winner imaginable there. That was absolutely incredible riding by Freddie Shot in the final there. James Greaves is doing everything to block him out. A wonderful race. What a finish.
Peter Carr gets gate two, he chose second. Sean Wilson gets gate three and he chose third. And David Walsh, who has to be rated a danger man with his gating ability, he had gate four. It's not hard to imagine David jumping from there to the front. So this is it, it's all down to this race. Qualifying scores are forgotten and the winner of this race will be the 1999 Scottish Open champion. We had a classic last year when Freddie Schott took James Graves from the back. What's gonna happen this time? Oh, Peter Carr was moving there and David Walsh has made the start. Stone Ewer's in second. Stone Ewer, I think, up alongside Walsh. Here comes Carr on the inside. And Stonewure, Stonewure inside, Walsh there trying to move him across. Carr looking for his big run on the inside. And Carr's got through into second, I think. He's trying to move Stonewure over. He's trying to get under Walsh. It's Carr, it's Carr, past Walsh, into the first turn. It's Carr leading. And it's Stonewure through into second. Hell for leather racing. Superb riding by Peter Carr. Clear as they go into the last lap. He's going to regain his title. He won it in 97. He's screaming into the last corner. He's fought through from third. And Peter Carr wins the Scottish Open Championship for 1999. What a magnificent ride. What a finale. David Walsh made the start. Stonehure and Carr were battling to get past him, one on either side. And the manoeuvring led to Peter Carr coming through for a fabulous victory. This is the final, the Scottish Open 2019, Cameron Heaps Gate 1, Richie Worrell Gate 2, Kevin Doolan Gate 3 and Rory Schlein on Gate 4 and that's the same gate he was on last year when he won the trophy. Worrell leads the way, Schlein is chasing, Worrell's in front. Worrell from Schlein, Schlein goes roaring inside him, pushes Worrell really wide but Worrell holds on. Schlein putting him under loads of pressure, swinging wide to cut back. And here comes Rory down the street. Richie Worrell still leads, out wide this time. Just, just enough drive to stay in front. Schlein's all over the back of him. Into the final lap. Is Richie Worrell going to do it this year? Rory Schlein has dropped a couple of lengths back. Big last bid round the outside by Schlein. And Worrell lifts, and who? I think Worrell got it. I think he got it. We'll just have to wait for the referee, but I think Worrell's still in front at the line, even though he lifted. So close. And we're not at a good vantage point up here. Fantastic effort by Rory Schlein, but I think Richie Worrell did it. Well, Dave, if we get served up that kind of action, come Saturday night, yeah. everyone will go home happy. Uh, I'll be there. Pretty sure oh, you'll be yes, there. Uh, we hope to see you too. We'll be back on a Saturday focus, Sunday focus. We're going to manage that on, Friday, on uh, Saturday. We'll Friday, see. Friday, Saturday. <laughs> I think we'll manage that. Our plan is to be back um, with a review <laughs> of the action come Sunday morning for you. But until then, get those tickets, get that stream. And thanks as always for watching, and goodbye.